Hello, I'm feeling fat and sassy and this is worth the buy. Today I'll be taking a look at Flood of Light. Available on Steam for $3.99, it's a puzzle game with a striking aesthetic and a beautiful soundtrack. Let's get straight to it. Usually this is where I talk about the core gameplay loop, but I don't think that's appropriate for a puzzle game, especially the kind where you take your time to think of a solution as you do in this game. The gameplay consists of a series of rooms, with balls of light you use to light lamps and other objects to complete the puzzle and move on to the next room. It's not quite that easy though, as light cannot be transferred to an already lit object and you can't transfer just one ball, it's all or nothing. That's why Flood of Light requires so much forethought, you can't just go around and light everything that needs lighting, you have to carefully manage which orbs go where. In the same vein, your character can only absorb light and transfer light in a small radius around her, so awareness of your positioning is key as well. Excess orbs on an object can be sent to another object in range without your character being near, which lets you do cool stuff like this. All these mechanics together make the puzzle surprisingly deep and difficult. Well, for me at least. With the core puzzle mechanic in place, Flood of Light does what all good puzzle games do. It slowly ramps up the complexity of each room and adds new elements and modifiers as you progress. Things like elevators you need to power, blue light orbs that you can use underwater, and the ability to create your own lamps. The difficulty curve, for me, was perfect. While some rooms can seem daunting when you first enter them, the game makes sure you're prepared to handle them. Maybe an expert of the puzzle game genre might find it too easy, but as someone who plays them sparingly, it was perfectly paced. Although even if you are experienced at these kinds of games, there's the optional lamps called wicks. There's usually one or two of them in each room, and they have to be lit as you exit the room for them to count. They're a nice bit of extra difficulty, and I only managed to get about half of them. Alright, I've covered most of what I want to say about the mechanics, so let's talk a bit about the art and music. Now I know a big reason I even clicked on this game was because of the unique aesthetic, and if you're watching this, I'm guessing it caught your eye too. The art is simply beautiful, and the rain and lighting effects add wonderfully to the atmosphere. And the music, ugh, I love it. I'm a sucker for this sort of melancholy, emotional, thoughtful sounding piano music. Let's listen to it for a moment. The game gives an atmosphere of loneliness with the occasional robots being the only interactions, and the sole piano in all of the tracks suits it perfectly. In the same vein as aesthetics, let me say a bit about the menu layout. The game also came out on mobile platforms, so I was very surprised to see the range of settings available in the options menu. Separate music and FX sliders, full resolution options, as well as windowed mode. No rebindable controls as the game is fully mouse driven. Getting close to wrapping this up, so let me talk about the cons Flood of Light has. There really aren't any. The only complaint I'd have, and it's a minor one that doesn't affect gameplay, is this. Throughout the game, a bit of story is conveyed to you by the robots you speak to and the message logs you find in the levels. All of this is in pretty poorly translated, broken English. The logs sort of make sense, and they're pretty difficult to read. All in all, the exact story of this game isn't important. The feel and atmosphere is executed well enough that it doesn't really need a backstory or explanation. You can try to parse through the logs and decipher them, but I'd recommend ignoring them. Okay, is this worth the buy? <laughs> well, I bet you can guess what I'm going to say. Yes, this is very much worth buying. I spent about 5 hours to beat the game, and at the price of $4, that's an absolute steal. To reiterate, the puzzles require thought and foresight, the difficulty curve is just right, and, of course, the art and music are absolutely gorgeous. I'm feeling fat and sassy, and this has been worth the buy. Thanks for watching.